Okay, so I wanted to record this video. I am fairly new to Unity, and I'm trying to develop a 2D side scroller with some character animation. And uh, so I'm developing my character, and I started initially by finding sprite sheets from different games. I found one from Prince of Persia, um, and I was trying to kind of copy the motion of the character from that and show how he animates and just sort of trace over his motions with my own character's motions. Uh, and it was kind of sloppy and wiggly and I'm not the best in Illustrator, so I was uh, looking for a better way to create uh, 2D side-scroller animation. Um, I found a decent workflow. Uh, it could definitely be improved and if you have any ideas of how to do so, please get in touch. Um, but this is the workflow that I found. Hopefully it'll be useful to someone else. Um, and it starts in Fuse, which is a fairly new offering from Adobe. If you have the Creative Cloud membership, which includes Photoshop and Illustrator and Premiere Pro and things like that, uh, it's included in that, so you can just open your Creative Cloud installer and uh, download that. Um, it's here in Apps, uh, Fuse. So I have it, obviously, otherwise it would say Install. Um, once that's installed, you can open it up um, and build your character. And it starts by just sort of like dragging these uh, characters in there. It's a little slow. Um, you know, and you would just click on the parts of the character that best matched what you were trying to create. Um, obviously, you can really tweak this. Um, so, this is just a quick and dirty female character and uh, with some funny mismatched legs really bad uh, weird farmer's tan anyway that's not my character I want to open mine which is uh, a model I made to resemble my friend Matt who is walking every street in the city of New York and this game is going to be about him um, he has a really cool blog called I'm just walking .com. check it out um, if you get a chance. Uh, in the meantime, uh, here's my character. I won't go too much into uh, Fuse, uh, but basically, once you have this character, you can go to Customize, and you can tweak all sorts of different things. Uh, you know, you can change hand positions, and how wide their jaw is, and wh how what shape their eyes are, and things like that. You can give them clothes. Uh, it's a little bit limited, and if they don't have what you need, as far as I know, there's no way to get more currently. Uh, maybe there's a way to build it yourself and, and submit it. Uh, so you're kind of stuck with what they gave you, but uh, with that you can do a lot. So uh, I made this character, and after I built him, I click this Save to Mixamo. Now Mixamo is sort of, I think it was, must have been bought out by... Uh, Adobe and sort of piled in with Fuse. It seems like it's in this sort of transitory state where it's still called Mixamo, but it's it's part of Adobe. Anyway, um, once you export this character, uh, he will find him in here. Um, and this is just sort of like, this is the first thing you'll see is your character. Uh, once this loads, you'll see he has a sort of resting pose. And you can give him all these animations. And the animations uh, have been uploaded to the Mixamo database and are, you know, being added on a regular basis. Um, these are all the animations my character can go through. Um, you can see the character has changed slightly. I, I started with this, and those still seem to be in this database. I could probably get rid of them at this point, uh, but. All of these up here are, are my character's animation. So I have him jogging, jumping, climbing stairs, sitting down, etc. You want to find more animations? You just go in here and search. So you describe the action you want them to do. Let's say we want them to hang. Um, so these are all kinds of hanging animations. Some of them are better than others. Um, some of them seem a little messed up. Uh, and you can just pick one, and your character will do it. Uh, so you know, we'll climb out. This is him kind of shimmying along a bar or something like that. Uh, and once you have it, you can click Add to Assets, or if you want to download a bunch at a time, you sort of add it. You click Add to Pack, 
and then you can download them all in bulk. Um, so, you know, again, if I were to go back to uh, here and downloads, I'll see, you know, I had created this pack with which had a whole bunch of assets, uh, and then I added one called Jumping Up. Um, so that's just an individual. And it outputs them as FBX, which is useful in all kinds of uh, 3D programs. I'm going to be using Cinema 4D, and the reason I'm using that is I'm going to, within Cinema 4D, I'm going to output an image sequence. So this is a blank scene in Cinema 4D. We're just going to open up the uh, character that was exported from Mixamo. Uh, there was a whole bunch exported, but um, I'm going to open up the main one, which is mat.fbx for, for me. Um, I'm going to leave all these defaults. And here's our character in his default T-pose. And you can see he's got this weird glow. He also doesn't look quite like the character in Mixamo, and I'm not sure why that is. but uh, if you go highlight all your materials and click on this basic tab here and uncheck specular, uh, you'll get rid of that glow. Um, so now you got your guy. You can see uh, not only do you have the shaded character, but you have this sort of spine running through him. That's the uh, skeleton. So I'm going to create a null uh, just to hold the character. I'll call it character. And we'll bring all this into there so that we can hide it real quick and see that skeleton. So this is, uh, you know, if you wanted to pose this guy manually, you could do that. You could turn your character back on, and you can see he's got to do in the fun, like doing the wave or something like that. Anyway, um, so that's that. Um, let's turn him back on, and we're gonna be creating a side scroller again. So. Uh, I'm going to use a left view, and this is the view I'm going to use to um, sort of render out my character um, and all of his animations for my game. Uh, so we're going to call this T-Pose, but we need to bring in all the other skeletons that have animations. And so uh, the way that I would do that is go to File, Merge, and then let's pick um, let's just pick one. Let's pick a jog forward. And we're going to merge that in. Um, and really, I think all we need is the animation, I'm not positive. Let's see what happens when I just bring that in and select a default. Uh, all right, so we'll call this jog, and we need a we have it here, and if we um, why this is only one frame, let's try thirty. Uh, no, 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 no. You can see I don't know much about Cinema 40. Oh, okay, here we go. Uh, so if we move forward here, you can see we've got our we got 25 frames here of jogging excitement of a skeleton, but not our character. Let me make sure there's not more. Yeah, no, he stops at 25. So let's make this 25 long. Um, so we need to tie that to the skeleton, and the way we do that is with a um, retargeting tag, then I need to find it here, uh, which is not always easy to do. Uh, and it puts here in character tag. So character retarget, and our target is going to be T-pose, and our source is going to be jog. So now all we have to do is drag those into the proper fields, and we've got our running character. Um, so now we can just export this from Cinema 4D, and we would have a series of. Uh, we we want to create an image sequence, um, so we'd have this image sequence uh, that we could use to compile our running animation in Unity 4D. Eventually, what we want to end up with is a sprite sheet, 
Um, but I want to do a couple of things before I output that sprite sheet. Uh, one is that I want to give my character a style. Um, so I'm looking for this sketch and tune shader. Um, so uh, let's see if I'm not exactly sure where to find it. Uh, texture, sketch and tune. Where is that? Shader. I think it's the sketch material. There we go. Um, and the other thing I'm going to do is a interactive render region. Um, this allows us to see in real time what everything's going to look like with the shaders applied. So this is what we've got uh, with the default sketch and tune shader. Um, and you could tweak this. There's a lot of things I don't like about this. Um, I'm not going to waste too much time on it because uh, your desires for shading might be different. Um, but the main thing I want to do is in um, render settings, sketch and tune, I want to make sure that this is a transparent, um, this output's transparent PNGs, so in the shading, the background, we just want to turn, the, turn it from color to off. There we go, and it's going to show up black, but when it outputs, it's going to be uh, transparent. So that's all I need for sketch and tune. And here, in my output settings, uh, I'm going to just leave this for at 800 by 600. You could change it to be whatever you want. And in render region, we actually want to use that interactive render region. And we want to set it to the size uh, that it's going to be for that full run animation. So I'll still need to adjust that. But um, since we're in this menu, we'll just uh, take a look at the rest of the options here. Um, the default format for output is TIFF, but we want to do um, PNGs. And uh, let's include the alpha channel. And um, that's good. Uh, you would then choose where you want to save it. You know, just you know, set it up to go to my desktop. Um, and I'm good. Uh, so now I could output the scene. And I would have a series of PNGs. I'll show you that in a second. But I, there's one other thing that I'd like to show you, and that is uh, an additional tag. I don't like this sort of uh, dithered look on my character, and to get a really nice flat look, uh, which is what I'm after, uh, I want to find the matte material uh, shader. Give me a minute to find that. No idea where it would be. Compositing. Uh, oh, it's a compositing tag, matte object. And then we just would set the color that we want there. So, you know. This might take a while to do, but I just do a quick and dirty. Like this is roughly the skin color I'd be after for his face, and then I could, uh, you know, apply that to his shirt. Oops, I'm really slow with this, guys. I'm sorry, but uh, hopefully this time will be a little, a little bit faster. Add another compositing tag. I'm sure there's a way to copy these down and not be so dang slow. Uh, but anyway, say we wanted to give him a red shirt. Bam, we give him a red shirt. And you know, I'd go through the whole character and um, give him the styles that I want. Uh, this slider here turns up the quality, so uh, you know, beef that up. And as I mentioned, you want to make sure your render region is. Uh, set to capture the whole character animation. It looks like he runs to about here, so that's fine. Um, anyway, 
So then I would go to render, to picture viewer, it would output all the PNGs, and then we could compile those into a spreadsheet. Now, uh, again, there's probably multiple ways to do this, but uh, I found a sprite sheet creator online that's free and works pretty decent, so I'm going to do that. But what you start with, um, here is my jog sequence, and um, it's just a bunch of PNGs. You can see I'm sort of scrolling through them in the finder here. To, um, they're all output, they're all transparent, um, and we want to put them all together. So once we go to the Submind Spreadsheet Creator, we'll end up with something like this, which has them all on one document. Um, so I use this app called Stitches. Uh, you can search for it on Google. Uh, you would just simply open it up, uh, select all your PNGs, and they would get, um, let's go ahead and do it, uh, they would get put here. And the only thing I don't love about this, but I haven't figured out a way around it, uh, maybe you have a better better resource you could share with me, is that it doesn't quite put them in order. So you can see we've got mat jump zero here, mat jump one here, and then it goes to mat jump ten and mat jump seven. So it's, it seems to be maybe uh, outputting them in the order that they get uploaded, not necessarily in a numerical order. Um, you know, four, five, six, nine. So uh, ideally, they would just be one, two, three, four, next line, five, six, seven, eight, etc. Um, but anyway, once you've got that the way you want it, you just click download spreadsheet. And once you have that spreadsheet, you can bring it into Unity. Now, um, here I am in Unity. Uh, if I drag that sprite sheet in, I'll get something that looks like this. You can see I've got my jog sprite sheet. Um, and by default, those will be set to single. You'll want to so, uh, click that uh, sprite mode button and change them to multiple. Apply those changes here, and then go to your spread editor. Um, so this is my spread editor, and within that, I could now slice this spread up. And if you keep it as auto, you could manually do it by cell count. Uh, so you could say there's four rows and four columns. Um, or, you know, if you knew the pixel width of each one, you could set it that way. Um, I'm just going to do automatic does this nice thing where it sort of finds the edges, fits them down as small as it can. Um, and so, you know, each character has its little box and that's going to be, it's going to be its own cell of the animation for our jog animation. And so the next thing we need to do is just a uh, rope down which numbers these are since they weren't output in order um, from that Stitches app. So. My frames were 0, 1, 10, 7, and then the next row was frame 11, frame 2, frame 3, frame 8, etc. So um, you can bear with me here, but I would need to rename all these. So that's jog sprite sheet 0, jog sprite sheet 1, jog sprite sheet 10, uh, underscore them all here. we can rename them. And it seems like Unity likes this uh, naming convention and if you stray from that it has a hard time um, being able to put together the animations that you need, so um, just note that. So now let's go back to that sheet ten. Should be seven. It should be eleven. Two. And again, this is going to be different for you, but for me, this is how it 
created this spreadsheet. And to keep myself from getting confused or getting a janky animation, I need to make sure they're named properly. Okay. Once that's set, you click apply here and it will create our spreadsheet. So now you can see each one of these here is a different frame of the animation. Now, my game has uh, a sort of animator component from Unity um, built in. And the way that I got that is um, once you have created this spreadsheet, if you drag it into your scene for the very first time, you will automatically receive an animator component and your animation built for you by Unity. Uh, since I already have that, I'm going to do that. Um, but let's take a look at what my an animator looks like. So I have a bunch of stuff in here that I've already rigged up, and if I play my scene, you'll get a better sense of what I've got going. So I've got this walk animation uh, that I already built, which was done from Fuse and Mixamo uh, from the workflow you just saw. Uh, if I'm running and hit the jump button, or if I'm walking and hit the jump button, the character jumps. If I'm standing still and jump, he does this funny um, jump animation. And I'm using physics from Unity, so I'm using the uh, rigid body 2D physics, the box 2D physics that comes included with Unity. I don't love it. Um, it seems a little bit like the characters on the moon. Uh, I would love to rig up my own physics engine, and I may do that down the road, but for now I'm just using the simple, uh, easy physics from Unity. Um, and it's got things like, uh, if we look at it here, rigid body 2D, you can give your character a mass, you can give them drag, and you can mess with gravity, things like that, and that will all affect kind of how the scene looks. So you could tweak that and try to get a little bit closer to the animation you're looking for. Um, and you could also tween the individual spreadsheets. Um, so um, say I wanted to create that jog animation, I would go in here and um, I do create state. And there's two options here, and they're very different. Um, I'm using actually a blend tree for most of my animations, but for this one, I'm just going to do an empty state. A blend tree makes sure that essentially, if your character needs to execute all of the frames of animation uh, in one span, so like with our jump animation, if he needs to go through that full range of motion before he, in the time that it takes for him to go up, gravity to affect him and for him to come down and touch the ground, then we should probably do a blend tree because that makes sure that all of those um, frames of our spreadsheet get seen in the time it takes him to jump up and jump down. Um, but uh, for this jog animation, I'm just going to do frame by frame animation. Uh, so I've got it here. Let's call it jog. And let's uh, create that jog animation and we'll put it in our animations folder and then from within our jog sprite sheet I'm just going to drag all of these frames into the timeline and Unity recognizes that um, that's going to be a timeline animation so it just uh, puts them in one after the other and we can check this out and see if it's what we want it to do so um, let's just change this to a free aspect so we can see the whole thing here so if I hit this play button you can see I'm running he's going way too fast um, and that is because the samples here, so it's essentially just saying this is set at 60, but this is like a 60 frames per second animation, and we don't want it to go that fast. Um, they're going to be a little blockier, and I'm okay with that. 
Um, so now if we play it, you see we've got a pretty smooth animation. It looks like he kind of bucks back a little bit when he runs, and I could adjust that later, but um, let's just for now stick with that. Um, and uh, so that's going to be our jog animation. Now what I want to do is make a transition from any state to jog. Uh, but I need some conditions, and uh, the conditions uh, I've kind of set up in conjunction with all my other animations. Uh, and the best one to look at is this walk animation. Um, so the conditions are that speed be greater than 0 0.01. Uh, so basically the character has to be moving somewhere. And that uh, this variable I've created, ground, is true, meaning character's touching the ground. If he's jumping, we obviously don't want him to be jogging. Uh, we want him to be jumping uh, if he's off the ground. So uh, now that I'm going to be putting this jog animation in place, I'm going to need another uh, parameter, and we're just going to call it is jogging. So um, let me delete this for now, actually. Uh, let's create that. Um, so here's our list of parameters over here. Um, and is jogging is a true or false statement. So uh, we're going to make it a Boolean. Uh, is jogging. So we've got it now. And now if we go back to this um, walk animation, is jogging has to equal false for him to be walking. Otherwise, he's going to be jogging. So um, we want that same list of conditions for the jog animations, but is jogging has to be true. So speed is greater than 0 0.01. Um, ground equals true. And is jogging equals true. <coughs> when all those things are met, uh, our character should jog. Right? So, um, in order to set this is jogging variable, I need to go into my script here, and I'm going to go into my update function, and just add those conditions I've, I've written them before. So I'm just pasting them in. But uh, basically, we're saying if grounded and input dot get key down equals key code left shift. I'm going to make it left shift, and I should probably set a variable for the run button for the jog button um, in case people in our game wanted to uh, reconfigure that key um, or they had a gamepad or something like that but for now just gonna say key code left shift if it's down set boolean is jogging to true if the key goes up set is jogging to false All right so now that that's in there um, let's test it out Okay, um, so I'm holding my shift key, and you can see this guy is freaking out. Um, so what's going on? Let's take a look. Well, uh, it has to do with this uh, thing, which I don't fully understand, to be honest. Um, but I'm going to set the transition duration to zero, set the offset to zero, set can transition to self off, because obviously uh, you just want it to run its course while the button is down. Um, and that should fix that. And you can see we've got a jogging animation. And again, I mentioned that um, you know it looks like he's just sort of bucking backwards a little bit. Um, so I'd want to go in there and tweak that. But for the most part, um, we've got a jogging animation. I'd also probably want to speed the character up while he's jogging. Um, otherwise, he's just doing that thing that people do when they pretend to run across the street. But anyway, that is my workflow for creating a sprite and implementing it in Unity.